Okay, guys. Here we go. And uh, I'm going to talk about web design. So my um, you know, you've obviously been learning a lot uh, this weekend about content and you know blogging and different different ways of producing content. So um, basically, what I'm going to talk about is you know the fact that uh, you have a blog, you have your content, so now what? I mean, how do you make it look good? Uh, there's a lot of different tools of doing it, and um, and so I just want to look at a few of those. Look, maybe a little bit of background about me. I work, I work for the Art Institute of Pittsburgh. My background's in graphic design. I'm a bachelor degree from here uh, in design, and so I do um, a lot of the, the promotions for uh, for the Art Institute. Um, uh, which has become a lot more web. Uh, I am traditionally a, a print background, um, but I do a lot. So visual communication is really uh, is really what I, what I what I do a lot to both manage events and the PR things. So um, I'll show you some of the sites I've done and um, and talk about a few of the things and how I how I think about it. And I, you know I don't I'm not pretending to be uh, the end all be all. I don't have every single kind of solution, but um, you know I. I like to think about things and keep them organized. Uh, and that's where I want to start because uh, when you think about visual communication, especially online, the first part of the uh, first step is, is about organization of information. It's really, really important. And I think that you know, as you're working on designing anything, um, that is what you should consider the most, especially with the blog. And I'm going to focus a lot on blog design and, and talk about things you can do with maybe WordPress specifically, and uh, maybe go over some of those 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 options that you have that are easy to do um, in terms of keeping your information organized and then how to how to present it. Um, unless you guys want me to get into maybe a little bit more in depth, like Photoshop and uh, how how to use like some really advanced tools, but I think I'm going to keep it more on the basic end. Uh, you know, maybe get some graphics and. And uh, so, um, so that's the end of my my slides. <laughs> that's the end of my slides. I'm just gonna jump into my the web. Uh, so I want to promote this one for a second. This is Creation Rex. I don't know if any of you are familiar with him. He's the dinosaur that is downstairs off front of the building. And a couple of years ago, uh, we. Uh, I forget, it was Dynamite Days, uh, the Carnegie Museum was, was had all the dinosaurs all over Pittsburgh. We sponsored a few of them and, and we sponsored Creation Rex and he is, um, he's down there. This past year we started to, uh, or we've been dressing him up and we decided to make, give Rex a personality and give him a blog for fun to be kind of a community engagement. And um, I suggest you check him out, he's very, very funny. Um, I am. Rex is Wrangler, if you are familiar with the blog, and so I get you know, kind of the, the, the brunt of a lot of a lot of his uh, activity. So you know, we do goofy stuff, you know, like he's a huge Steelers and um, Penguins fan, which is probably why he's not here right now. Uh, so he's watching the game, I'm sure. So yeah, check out Creation Rex. I want to pimp that real quick. Um, uh, so yeah, so another site. This is a site that I really like in terms of design. This is another designer. I'm sorry, this isn't. I don't know, I, this isn't uh, showing the whole page all at once, but um, I, I really, really like the way this is this is simply done. I, I really like things for for myself to be very simple. Well, it's smaller. I don't know if it's better. So. Um, so you can uh, my settings are set up for something else. Um, well, um, it's fine. I'll be moving around a lot. So, uh, the, you know, the, the, what I really like about this is um, how, how clean it is. I mean, you have your, your menu up here. And then um, it's very simple in terms of how it's organized, and, and you can do this very easily in WordPress. And there's a lot of teams that auto organize this for you. So you know, this is the page that they, the way they have this up. They have pages up here uh, that you can click to. And then they have you know the sidebar over here with you know Twitter and you know some of some of the stuff that the relevant information to them. So uh, this is this is a WordPress theme that we're looking at right now. Yeah. Um, 
And then what I like about this is when you get into this guy's portfolio, it, it's um, it's organized very well. You know, you have advertising, annual reports, books here, illustration, um, etc. So um, and it's very simple to just kind of browse and and, and kind of go through that. Um, it's hard to know what those things are. Yeah, the, they are, and you well, you click on them, and then you, you're not meant to see the whole thing. So then you click on it, and you get a logo. I'm just thinking about organization right here, not so much the visual. I really like how this is organized, um, and, and maybe I would do it a little differently if I was, if I was doing it. Um, and I'm not saying that this is what your solution is either. Uh, I'm gonna swing over to that night, who is a local blogger, and she, I think, is a good example uh, because recently. Um, she kind of did a refresh of her blog. And if you're familiar with uh, Mad Night Plug, uh, Rachel, she's not, I don't think she's here today. But um, she had a lot of stuff that used to be on here. She had photo galleries, different picture of the day, uh, and all the links going to all this other stuff she was doing online. And she cleaned it up, and she just kind of, she simplified visually what's happening, and I think that this is a really good solution. Uh, and you can see the, the graphics are, are fairly minimal. Uh, you have you know, our header on top, and then again, the, um, you know, the navigation along the side. And in this site, um, you know, there isn't too much, uh, there's, there's not a lot of pages, uh, you just kind of you know, some, some supplemental information on the side here. Uh, and she doesn't need, she doesn't have a list of pages or categories. So this might be something what you're looking at if you're looking to develop a personal blog. Uh, you know, and you're not going to have tons and tons of content. You have your blog, your, your main feed with all your posts. Maybe you have an about page or something. She doesn't even have an about page here. Oh, actually, she does. I'm sorry, right here. So you know, you can find it, and you know, here is her, here's her about. So I think this is a good um, example of maybe where you want to start to begin. Um, so, um, so the, I just wanted to give a couple of examples uh, right off the bat. Um, in terms of design, uh, I think the, the, the most thing you want to consider is, I think, your space and your relationship. What's the most important information that you want to communicate? So it goes back to organizing your information. Uh, if you want to put it, uh, if you want, you know, know what you want to be the most important, think about it. And, and then go do some research and go look at all of the other blogs that are out there. Go to WordPress.com. Which I'm going to show you in a minute. And just surf around and see what other people are doing and what you like and what you don't like, and that will help you kind of figure some of these things out. Um, but if you were designing a site from scratch, you know the spatial relationship I think are a lot are really important. You know how big do you want your header to be? Do you want to focus on some images? Do you want people to see your your blog post right away, or do you want to showcase some other? Um, content. Uh, and I'll, I'll give you some examples of those in a minute. Um, uh, and, um, and I think the, the, the oh yeah, sorry, okay, so yeah, let me, let me show you an example of a site I recently designed, sorry, my desktop's really a mess, and I, I'm doing a project, uh, it's a freelance project, and this is for a band called um, Midlife Crisis, and um, Sorry, I didn't have a formal PowerPoint together. I didn't have the time to do that. Um, so, um, so this site uh, is for a band, and what they really wanted to focus on was. Um, was uh, photos of the band, and their goal was to have, um, I mean, have, have showcase, you know, fun, relaxed setting. A couple of guys hanging out. We have a band. They're not a big band. They do a lot of uh, shows that are um, for not for nonprofits and benefits and stuff. So, uh, you know, so I'm, you know, fo focusing on you know the photos here. We wanted to focus on the band themselves, and you know, here's you know the, the mass head to give that sort of a to try to. Bring it all, like to give that sensibility about the these guys hanging out, you know, band, and um, and in this in this situation, we chose not to have all the posts listed on the homepage, but rather we'll just create a list because there could be a lot of information that might not change that, or the, the information might not change that often. So if, if you're coming back to it, maybe the photos are changing, but the posts aren't changing. So 
And this way, it keeps the page. I mean, this would, this would be about the height of the page, so you're not going to have to scroll to get the content. Um, and so the, there, there wasn't a whole lot of pages that needed to be created for this. Um, and so this is just one solution. Um, and uh, I think that they're going to go with something similar to this. So uh, again, I kept the about up here uh, in, in terms of hierarchy, because you know, they want to focus on themselves, uh, of course, and then you know, their, their other content is kind of like push, push down on the page, so it's all about hierarchy. Uh, and here, uh, I think this is a good example of ways you can organize information. Uh, you know, they have they had a couple of different things that they wanted to highlight, which was gigs, their their photos, and then other news that the band might have. So the categories for the blog are here, and so here are the blog posts, and then the categories are repeated down here. And the pages would be various sections. Okay, this is a little more custom. When you, uh, and, and so you're probably not going to have to think too much about this part of it. Um, and if you do, uh, and it's not your piece of money, just contact us and help you figure that out. Was that uh, WordPress? This is just a design in Photoshop right now. It will be more than WordPress. So I don't think that this site is live now. Their old site was not a blog site. So um, it, looked really, it was really hard to navigate. Um, so let's get back. So. Um, OK, so let's talk about WordPress for a minute. Um, so here's WordPress.com. And so how many of you are have a, have a blog, and, uh, or, or you're going to start a blog very soon? OK, great. Are you, are you going to consider, how many people are going to consider WordPress.com to start their first blog? OK, great. That's perfect. That's perfect. So here's the home page of WordPress.com. And going back to, I, I really like, they recently redesigned the home page because they show all, they, they showcase hot topics that are happening in WordPress right now. And you know you can jump to them very quickly uh, if, if, you're, if you're interested in just checking out what, what's happening on WordPress. Uh, I think that they do this really well. They, they present all the information very clearly. Uh, so um, on WordPress.com, uh, it's um, really easy to, to keep thing, to keep design simple. Uh, and I'm just going to go to one of my sites. Um, and show you kind of the back end and how you can manage the front very quickly. Um, so when you log in, here's a, I have a bunch of sites here. Let's, let's do let's see, casual magic. So I have a hobby blog called casualmagic.com. It's about Magic the Gathering. Um, and uh, so I haven't updated this in a while, but the um, but WordPress.com is a great way for me to keep to maintain this site because I don't have to pay for it, and it's a hobby, and it, do, it does just as well for me as, um, as anything else. So when you when you get your account set up, you get into the back end here, which is your dashboard, and this is kind of like the main main place for you to, to the command center for your blog. So when you get in here, uh, what you want to do is um, they they offer a lot of great ways for you. My computer's really messed up. I'm sorry, I keep. Uh, appearance down here uh, in, the, in the sidebar. And so when you click on appearance, it, it, it allows you to, to do a number of things, like, like sample all the free themes that they have. So you can get a theme in WordPress.com, and they have a lot of different options. I think about 25 different options. And then you can vary, you can get in and customize some of those, some of those things. So you know, I'm not going to go through all of those right now, um, but there are a lot of them. I'm really sorry that this is so hard to see. Uh, but you can go in there and, and view them and experiment with them on your own. And, and going back to thinking about organization of information, different themes will help you know which one you want. Uh, uh, and um, a, a good example of that is uh, a fam the family blog that we have. I guess I'll just jump around to that for a second. Um, and the goal with that is my parents are online and they're blogging. And I wanted to make it real easy for them to write a post because they're not real um, uh, tech, techie at all. And so here's this site. And, um, and you can write a post right in here uh, very quickly and just click post. And then you know, and it makes it very simple. And that was the goal. That was like the number one thing I wanted is just the super ease of posting. And then to show a picture about who's posting. Uh, so, so yeah, so this is just a way for our family to stay connected because we're all spread out all over the country right now. So that has worked out uh, fairly, fairly well for us. Um, so let's see. Yeah. 
have a question about WordPress. Yeah. Um, I was doing a little bit of research between is there a difference on WordPress.com and WordPress.org? Yeah, I'll get to that. I'll get to that. So in WordPress.com, going back to um, appearance, So that's so, so I'm just trying to cover themes right now. So these are the three themes you can get. Well, I'll just jump to that, I guess. WordPress.org, you don't have this, this when you click on appearance when you install WordPress.org, you, you get your themes manager similar to this, but it's only the themes that you've uploaded into your WordPress themes folder uh, on, the, on your server. So um, you can get tons of free themes online if you just Google WordPress free themes. Uh, I actually have a, have a a list up here, and you, there's tons and tons of free themes for WordPress. Um, here we are. This is one of them. Free theme, WordPress free themes. So you can just Google them, download them. You know, it's very easy to preview them. Uh, it's easy to modify. If you, uh, yeah, you, you you download the code, you get all the CSS, all of the PHP files, and you can bring them right into Dreamweaver or your editing software and edit them. So if you're familiar with how to edit that stuff, um, well then. I, I don't. I mean, I, you can teach yourself some basic HTML, uh, and maybe, and maybe you can also look for a theme that has some editing capability. Like sometimes themes have options to change colors of different things, um, and that's uh, you know that's a good way. That's a good place to start. When I first got started with WordPress, I was doing free themes, etc. Um, so. The so. themes that come with WordPress.com, though, it's just like a template that you. Can like anybody can just type the stuff into. Right, right. Okay, you don't have um, to do like fancy. Right, so, um, so under, in my theme, for the magic site, uh, you have some current theme options right here. And uh, when, when you just click appearance, your current theme is just right at the top. And if you have these options, they're available. Not all themes on WordPress.com have the same options, unfortunately. Uh, and it gets a lot better over time. So in this one, you can have a custom image header. Uh, I chose. They also have a number of defaults uh, that I could choose within this theme. So, you know, if I wanted textile, that would be, you know, the, the theme, or that could be the image in the background. And I could also change the color uh, to passionate pink if I wanted to. And then, uh, if I save these settings. And view the site. I've 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 actually just changed this, and this is live on the homepage of the site now. So it's very so it's very simple to change change that. And before it was that the moon and the orange image. So um, so if anyone were to visit my site, I, I changed that color. So those, that, those are real simple simple options within this this particular theme. And I can't change, I mean, I can't change the way a lot of this works on, well, you, on WordPress.com without paying for the ability to, to, to edit the code. Um, and I, I choose not to do that. I'll show you how to, how, how to, to think about that in a second as well. Um, so that's how you do that. And then if you um, if you did want to edit your, your code, uh, you um, you can edit your CSS right here in, uh, in WordPress, and you can literally alter the code as as uh, like you can alter the PHP and the HTML right in WordPress.com. Uh, and I don't I don't have that option available. They want me to pay for it, but um, you would do that right here, and you can edit you can edit that right on WordPress.com if you choose to. Uh, the next great thing about WordPress in terms of keeping your information organized is um, the widgets. And, you know, and so how this works is, um, you know, you're, if you have sidebars, and um, sometimes you have two sidebars, a footer, a header, you can tell WordPress what information you want in there, like um, your links, uh, your, your Comments. If you want certain blog stats, um, you know how many people have visited your site. You have metadata like the login, log out options, and and it's very simple to do this. Uh, if you if I wanted an archive, which is basically a list of everything that I've ever written uh, or linked a link to to that, I can do you just drag it over and you choose the order of what you want, and now that's in my sidebar. And what's cool about this is obviously you, I can title this whatever I want. It, I, if I leave it alone, I can title it archives, or I can 
you know, title of cool stuff or photo, you know, photo gallery or you're trying to get creative with the way your, your sidebar goes, um, you can do that. Um, and it's very easy to, to plug and play. So I suggest when you go in there and you just start messing around with it and see, you know, just play around and have, have some fun with it. Um, here, I'll show you uh, uh, what this will look like. If anyone's reading the site right now, they're probably wondering what the heck I'm doing, making it pink. Uh, and so I just click save and um, let's see. Right. See, here's my cool stuff now that I just added in. So it's that simple to, to make it live. And, and so the, so archives is a list of all of the months that you've been blogging. And I guess if I click that link, I don't know what I just clicked on. Uh, um, if I click a link, it will um, show, I, I think, all the posts in that month. Uh, so that's, that's a cool thing to do. And if I want to get rid of this, I can just click remove, and it's gone. So um, if I wanted, and you can have multiple instances of some of these too, like uh, like this, like adding adding text or um, special messages. Like so, I have two text text links here. Um, I wanted you know I wanted a, a specific with uh, um, link to to something else, and I can get in there, and uh, and you can you can paste HTML, a little snippet of HTML right in your sidebar. And then paste it in here and title it whatever you want. And that way you can click through and it'll display on your page. Um, so there's a lot of different options options there. Um, okay, so let's move on to, to some, maybe some more content. Uh, in terms of header and, um, and images, uh, typically, you know, what, what makes a good header and what, why, and why would you, you know, want want to have a header? And it goes back again to what's your purpose of your blog and, and your information. Uh, I think, you know, what I typically do is, um, you know, is uh, whatever is right for the site. Creation Rex is a really big header. This is like I think a 500 pixel tall header, and um, it's it's really wide and John Carmen helped develop the theme for this, and you know he believes in like these really really tiny headers that are only 150 to 200 pixels wide. Uh, so uh, we could have done that with Rex, but I felt like we wanted to really kind of get like a, show the, the the flavor of him without really saying anything. Uh, and so we didn't have a lot of navigation for this. We just had the blog post. So this is a really simple site in terms of pages and stuff. So this is a really large header. Um, and again, with the band slide I showed you, that was a really um, large header also because they wanted to show a lot of like visual. They wanted some intense visuals. Uh, uh, with um, this casual magic site, I think, uh, man, I don't even know what. Well, this computer sucks. I'm sorry. It's clicking on everything. This is a really small header, and I have a couple, and I don't really want a big header here because I just want people to get to my content very quickly. So that kind of drives my decision making. There. Um, I would, uh, you know, if you think about uh, headers, what maybe think about a really good image or a logo or something. You know, you're thinking about your header. It's like maybe a little bit of your brand, right? You know, if you go to web some websites, it's like your brand. You always have the logo in the top left because that's the first thing it's going to load, and we want people to see that. And there's a lot of research that visual research that's been done, like looking at where people's eyes go online. And, uh, how, what's the first thing you look at on uh, as a part of a web page? And it would typically be, you know, this this top right corner of the web page. So if you if you're really trying to create a brand or a, or a theme, uh, maybe think about something like that. You know, this the top the top part, and then the, the down the side on the left here is typically where your eye goes most most often uh, while viewing the website. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, I really, um, but when you actually go, what you put there, maybe it's you just want some photos and and you're creating a blog that kind of is a representation of you or you know some something that doesn't have to be so strictly brand oriented. You know, think about images that are good and think and, and, and think about um, and when I say good, that's a tough thing. I, I, I was trying to find interesting images and recently I saw Uncle Crappy, um, his website, Mike Town. He, uh, I think he's got a really cool image in his head. And this is kind of an abstract photo of a building in Bloomfield. And you know, here's, 
here's Uncle Crappy, you know, not a lot of information up there, but you know where you know that you're here when you get there. And I don't think this is a good image because it kind of it, it's like you know you turn back a little bit of the, the wrapper around the candy bar and you get to see, you know, you get to see what's in there and then the, the image um, creates these uh, in my imagined lines, you know, the these implied lines, the key and start area and then this. Triangle and really you, you in my, in my I think you know, you look here first because this is a dark contrast area. You know, these lines are kind of pushing out the content. And so it's a good kind of a visual cue. So if this image were upside down, it might be a little bit harder because you know, you're pushing someone by the up to the top of the page. And maybe that's not what you want to do. So think about those implied lines when, when you're choosing an image or maybe cropping an image. And this to me is really interesting, and that's my personal preference, and I, I really like what you did with it. Um, so you know that that looks kind of cool. Um, you know, if, going back to that that night, you know, she had that written in text all across the top, I and mean, that was a kind of interesting way. So that was, I don't would consider that maybe more of a photo illustration. You know, here we have photography, um, or you could just do a color and some text. Um, you know, whatever works for you. Uh, so, um, so options about um, posting and pictures. Um, you know, when you are managing photos in WordPress, um, where did my WordPress go? I think I lost it. Okay, so when you're writing a post, uh, let's write a new post. And you're and you add an image in. Okay, so you you upload images. Okay, just in case some of you don't know, this might be a little basic. You add images here. This button. Uh, you, you click here, and then. You go to this this um, this window pops up, and you can choose to upload files from your computer, or um, uh, or if you click on here, if you copy a URL of an image location, you can paste it in here. And then on the third tab, the media library is a collection of all the images that you have uploaded this way. So um, so here's all the stuff I've uploaded recently. This is a good one right here. So so I'll insert this image. At full size, into my post, and um, and the reason I'm showing you this is um, not all, not not everyone always knows that you, what you can do with um, with this. Uh, uh, if I preview. This image is going to be really large and wide across the whole um, the whole um, area of my post, and maybe I don't want that image to be that wide. Uh, maybe I want it to be smaller. Maybe I want text to wrap around it. So I'll show you how to do that real quick, and it's very simple. Um, and again, it just takes some time to you know editing it. So when you click on your image right here, you have this button that is, says Edit Image. What is that? I'm sorry? What is that? Uh, this is an illustration of a magic card. It's a fantasy art. Thing, so. It's cool. Yeah, it's fun. Um, so when you click edit image, you can have it auto reduce or enlarge your image so so you can make it smaller or bigger. And this is just kind of distorting. I mean, it's, it's the code like forcing it to expand or grow smaller. So if you're trying to make things bigger, it might look a little distorted. But if you're, and, but if you're shrinking things, it usually works works okay. So you could you could man you could let you could let this do it, or you can manual manually do it under the advanced settings. Um, I typically I typically use the advanced settings because I'm I'm like if I'm taking a picture like even with my iPhone or I'm getting from somewhere else, the picture might be larger than 500 pixels, and I'm feeling lazy instead of going into Photoshop and manually resizing it and you know going through those little steps. I'll just put the picture in there and then. Force it to be smaller, and so under advanced settings, you can do that very quickly, um, and force the, the width. So if you're if you're if this photo were say a thousand pixels wide, which would basically be almost double what it is, and that would be too wide for my blog post area, and uh, I would type in the width of 500. In this case, I'm going to make this one smaller, so I'll just make this 300. And I know I want it to be 300 wide, and, and the height 
I mean, you know, there's that ratio, and if I type in another height that isn't the ratio of what this originally was, again, it would distort the image and would force it to fit in that size. Um, uh, so I, so what, there's a simple solution for that, just make the height nothing. Um, if you make it zero, it'll be zero pixels high, and you won't see an image, you know, like that. So just make it, just don't put anything in that box, and then, um, and then you can hit uh, update down here, and the image is smaller. Uh, so, uh, and then, then editing your image, uh, I can, you know, I can type text in below it or um, up here, it will appear beside it. Um, and if I want it, but, you know, and, and then you can edit this image just using, you know, up, this is your toolbar up here, it's kind of like um, Microsoft Word is how, has kind of how it focuses, so you, know, you can put it in the center uh, to the um, you know, left justify or right justify. Um, and then uh, one thing that's important to know is if you're fooling around with this and things kind of get a little weird uh, if with your image, sometimes your image is just like, just, if you're trying to use this toolbar, it's not, it just doesn't, it doesn't work out. You can't get it to go back to the original way. You have to click your HTML tab and this is all the code behind that post and you can see like there's all like text align left is here and you know, you may, I may want to delete that. You may have to go in your code and maybe delete some of the tags that are around the content. Um, so um, I hope that's not too advanced. But um, once you get in there, you can play with it. Uh, it's, it's not as confusing as all that. This has a lot of code because we're linking to an image and stuff. Um, but if, but your, your, your plain text would also appear there, and it's a little bit easier to see. Uh, and then the only other thing I wanted to mention is if I do have um, my image in case I want to get it back to. See, it? okay, here we go. So you see how here there's the text is bumped right up against it. Uh, if you go back into your uh, image setting here, uh, and you need to go to advanced and then look at um, your image properties, your border, the vertical or horizontal space that will be around it. Um, I typically use eight pixels, and then I'll create it. Uh, a, it'll bump. You can see the preview up here. It bumps it eight pixels, the text eight pixels away. If you're building a custom theme, you can write that in your CSS. That would um, any image that appears on your site will automatically have um, that padding around it. Um, some of your free themes will probably might already come with that. If you always want your photos to be left justified or center justified or specific width, you can write that in your CSS code too. So you have a lot of options with how you can set it up. That way, if, if, I, if this theme had any photo I enter automatically bumps you know, eight pixels around it, then I would never need to do that in, you know, in this stage of the, of the post writing process. Um, you can also add a border, which I think adds a color border uh, to to it. I never seen. I never use. Oh, this is adding a black border. So if I update, this will have a black border around it. And I also removed the the, the sizing. I accidentally removed that. So um, so yeah. So just again, play around with it. I just want to make you guys aware of those options that you have for any uh, pictures uh, in your posts. Because um, that's always helpful. Uh, when you're thinking about um, when you're thinking about posting pictures, try to try to keep a uniform style, like what, what you in terms of your process. That's a good a good thing to think about. Um, it helps keep your blog feel like a blog. And if you ever want to do anything special, you can. It makes it special. Otherwise, if you're just always randomly making things like large and small and random borders, and, and it's harder to kind of maybe maybe get get something that is a call out if you're always doing stuff that's random. Plus, it's easier on your reader's eyes. And, uh, and, and when you're thinking about design, you just want to make it as easy to read as possible. That's always my, my goal as a, as a designer is, let's make this so people who, who want to read this don't have to you know, try really hard to actually read something. Um, my boss always makes it really hard because she types like paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs. And, I'm um, like, oh, that's, nobody reads anymore. So if, if you can get someone, if you can design your, your blog to make it feel like people are looking at your site and reading your content without actually having to think about reading it, I think you've, you've been successful. Um, so, okay. 
um, post a picture. Oh, yeah, the same for links. So you can you can do links too if you're running if you're developing your blog and you can control the way the links appear. You should always um, try to make them look uniform. I think someone was talking about this in another session. Is you know always have to always let people know what the link is. So when they're they're surfing your site. And, and you're going to send them to the site, you know that they can click on that and go away. And it also helps with SEO, I think you were talking about in your session uh, the other day, which is um, you know, if you are typing a keyword and you want that to be a link, make sure you know that the links, people know what their links are, so that way if you do type the keyword that you link, they make a link out, that will you know, just make sense to people. Um, so, Oh, the last thing I want to cover before maybe just opening up for questions is um, what are some free tools that are available for, for image editing? Uh, I, I'm not real familiar with this, so there may be more and better tools, but this is, Picasso has Google's uh, tool, uh, and uh, I know that this is fairly popular. So this is a tool that you can use to edit your photos, um, I, I don't know how in depth you can do it, but it looks like you can, you know, change the brightness and contrast, maybe make something black and white or a sepia tone if you're interested. Edit some red eye, probably crop the photo, change it, reverse it, or flip it. Uh, and um, so you can maybe experiment with that if you don't have that photo editing software. Uh, also, if you, maybe you, you want to purchase something, Adobe Photoshop Elements is is maybe something worth looking into. Uh, you know, this is going to be a watered down version of Photoshop that's going to have some general image editing capabilities and um, you know you're probably you're not going to be able to uh, export I mean, what that means is you know why it's watered down is you don't have all the professional options of like exporting to all the different file types all of the different printing and color management availabilities because you're just developing stuff for the web and it's R RGB and I'm getting way really too technical anyway so um, so yeah so those those is are different from the web I'm sorry. Is it different from the regular flash? It's, it's so I, I'm not 100 percent sure exactly what it what what it's watered down, but it's it's not the complete version of Photoshop, but it's parts of it. So, but it focuses on image manipulation. I don't know if anyone else here knows more about it. Um, so, I, I have a question for you. Do you have any feelings about GIMP? G I M P. What what is that? I'm not familiar with it. GNU Image Manipulation uh, Program. I'm not. It's similar to uh, Photoshop. Uh, Maybe a few building plus building bells and whistles. Some people like it more than use both. It's totally free, mm -hmm. available for Mac, PCs, and X Nixes, being on Unixes. G I M P. Gim, I've used it before. It's okay. It's, it's not as powerful as Photoshop, but if you're sending this on the web, it's fine. You take down the resolution, resize it, you can call it. It's so, not G I M P. G I M P. And it's free. You just go to I don't know. It's GIMP.com, GIMP.org, or GIMP Open Source Workshop. So there's another one. There's another tool. So there's some free. I know that there are other free editing uh, things out there. I know on uh, looking at this, you can get a free trial version of Photoshop Elements to try. Um, I think this. I think this says it's like hundred dollars. Maybe you can find it for less somewhere. Um, or if you get your hands on an old version of Photoshop for you know, less, for less too. You know, it depends on how serious you are, how how much you want to get into it. Um, so those are my, so those are the, so that's, that's basically a crash course in, you know, design. And, I, you know, I really, we didn't get too, too designy, but, you know, I hope that that's helpful. So I want to open up for questions. I want to ask you about this uh, newsletter. How do you think the newsletter capabilities uh, to, to WordPress, so if, uh, you know, uh, you can uh, keep in touch with your possible clients or customers? How, how do, how do, how yeah, do so to this, like, Newsletter capabilities, maybe like they can subscribe, let's say, subscribe to the newsletter, and you can, you know, email them on a regular basis. Well, there's um, on well, okay, on there's uh, two two answers to that. On Creation Rex, um, I keep I'm oh, here. It is. So on Creation Rex, we have a subscribe function, which uh, I think I'm logged in, so you won't actually see. So you can subscribe. Oh yeah, okay. Here. So on CreationRx, I know your email address, and this is a plugin that we use for WordPress called Subscribe To. Uh, if you're on WordPress.com, you don't have the ability to add plugins, but if you have a .org site, you can add plugins to your, to your site. So this one, I think, is a really good tool. 
Um, it took me a little bit to get it working properly. Um, and it had to do with my web server and, and that sort of thing. Uh, or you, each blog, each WordPress blog is going to have an RSS feed. And RSS stands for Real Simple Syndication. Uh, and that is the delivery method that you can subscribe to. Uh, this, little with, this little button up here is the RSS button. So if I click it, I can view the RSS feed for Creation Rex. And so this is just a little snapshot of all the posts that, that are up. And when you subscribe to it, if you need, uh, your, your feed reader will collect all those posts and you can subscribe to hundreds, hundreds of them at a time. So that's how your people will, will get you. Uh, there are also other email subscribe options like um, FeedBurner, is that right? Is that FeedBurner? Oh, FeedBurner? For email subscriptions? Oh, I don't know. I think it's FeedBurner. Uh, and they, they're pretty good. They're a pretty good one. I know a lot of people use them. And you would be able to insert, insert something like that, I believe, into a WordPress.com account, account if you take a text widget and stick it in there. Uh, there may be other options for email subscriptions on WordPress.com. I just have not explored that. But I think they're out there. Yeah. I'm still not clear on if you're going to set up a WordPress, if it's .com or .org that you want to set up. Okay, so the different, the basic difference between .com and .org is .com is hosted out there on WordPress, WordPress's server. So you don't have to pay for hosting. You don't have to. You don't get it. You don't have to buy any URL or any of that. You, it, you're, it'll be your blog .wordpress.com, and that's free, and it'll be a part of the WordPress network. So that's kind of cool because they can they sometimes cross link you to other posts of relevance and get traffic from other WordPress blogs. You can end up on their homepage. WordPress.com is pretty cool, uh, and you can set up as many blogs as you want. <laughs> so like uh, my dashboard over here, uh, it just has tons and tons of tons. Of, like uh, I have a couple of, a couple I started and where ideas, a couple I started for different groups. Some of them get used, some of them don't. So, um, and then you can delete them too if they don't work out. So your dashboard up here manages all of that stuff. Um, uh, .org is if you have your own domain name and your own web host, you can install WordPress on your host, and that will put a copy of WordPress that's basically exactly like back into WordPress.com, but you can you can control everything about it. Um, you're limited. You can't do plugins on WordPress.com, and you, you have a limit with how you can edit the, the, the themes. You can, you're limited with the themes. You can pay to alter the themes on WordPress.com. You can pay to have a custom URL on WordPress.com. And those options are under upgrades right here. Uh, so you can pay to have more space on WordPress.com. I've never run out of space on a WordPress.com account. So I haven't run into that issue yet. Are the majority one or the other? I'm about to, it depends on, for me it depends on the, the purpose. Uh, like my free hobby blog is like, I don't, I don't want to pay for it. But the Art Institute Creation Rex, we want to be able to manage that. That's a custom theme that we made, and we want to customize a lot about that. Um, adding a subscriber widget. Um, we want to, if you want to have really more than just very basic control over your site, you're going to want a WordPress doc or a site. Also, if, um, if you're thinking of having a website, you can have a website in WordPress.org because you can make the home page look more like a website and, and also have your blog. Now, does that cost anything else? WordPress doesn't cost. Is it just cost. the cost of your URL? It would be, yeah, your other web costs. Your URL, your web space would be your cost. Downloading WordPress. Word, downloading the WordPress files that you install is free. Okay. Uh, one reason Oh, it's a placeholder, a whole whatever name you use, and they redirect people to your other content. You also are not allowed to advertise, like if you advertise it's WordPress. WordPress.com doesn't allow you to advertise. Blogger does allow you to advertise. Um, I have a blogger account. A friend of mine's got a, another batch of blog, and this is on Blogger. He's got tons of ads. I was going to use this as maybe a bad example, even though it was a friend of mine. Uh, it's just really hard for me to, to kind of find, like, just scroll through his site sometimes because there's so many things going on. Here's where his post starts, but you know, I had to scroll so far down to get to the content, and um, and he's just got a lot going on. Um, 
so you know, when I go to this, I don't know what's its header. You know, what is this website? Um, it's MTG realm, and you know, this is this is his header, and this is his header image, and that's just you know, this is the, the name of the site and the, the description he's given it, and that's how the, this um, feed, which is uh, one of the general things you can get on the blogger, and that's how just how he has configured. Are you? These are ads. These are banner ads. And I, I don't know how he gets paid, if he gets paid. I think it's probably click through. Maybe he just puts them up because he's nice. I don't, I don't know. He may just put them up. I don't know. Um, and so here, here we have, um, th this is his feeds. So this is going back to sub subscriptions. So you can have lists of your feeds that people can subscribe to listed in this way um, if you want to. Uh, I would. Actually, no, this is just a list of his posts. I'm sorry. Well, you, you could list your feeds, but this is not a list of his feeds. Uh, even though, see, I was confused. It's, or, it's not organized very well. Uh, but, uh, you know, his, con his content's fine, and that's why I come back. Uh, and, and so, but it's just the site is organized poorly, I believe. And, and even on a free site, you can, you can keep it simple and keep, it, um, and keep, things, keep things easier to read. So, um, so yeah, that was that's one example. Uh, yeah. Do you have any other recommendations besides WordPress in terms of building your sites? Um, Is that obviously those? for for free for free stuff? I don't. Either way. I, I would use whatever you're more comfortable with, Blogger or um, WordPress. Those would be my top two. I know Live Journal. Live Journal has one. Touch Chat. I use Joomla. Yeah. The, no, there are a lot of options. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Drupal. Well. Really not blogs. Yeah, it's really yeah, very soon. Yeah, right? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I think you have the option of making pages private, yes. And um, I've never. You can make posts private. Posts private. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you can make things private. There are options to do that it, within Sorry, the background. That's fine. I was thinking of yeah. Was your family blog a freeborn? It was on dot com. It was dot com. Yeah. Do you have any experience with password protected user management and areas that people can get back to? Uh, to be able to access it. Um, just the site itself? Uh, not specifically. You can have, uh, I mean, I, I don't know exactly what you might be referring to, but one, one membership that Yeah, okay, so that's what I was thinking is in WordPress, you can have people register with your blog in order to use the content right. or comment. You, like, you have to have your users register. So you would, uh, where is the register? So, you can set up classes of users. Yes. So, so here's here's the users from my magic site. Um, you know, and you can give different options. I can add as I think you can have up to thirty or so on a WordPress.com account for users. And um, and then you can have people subscribe. I don't have any subscribers, um, but you can you can list them. But they're technically you. Uh, I think they're users, but so they're subscribing to your content, and they would have to log in, uh, maybe to see some content. Or and I know on WordPress.com you can, or dot, dot org. I'm sorry, you can control that a lot more. And you can install plugins to help you manage who can see what, who has access to what. Um, but you know, like David was saying, if you have uh, more of a dynamic website in general, and you want to add a blog to that, then you know you might. You might you know, I talked to you how whoever's developing it for you, maybe work out the right solutions for each content. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I know that. My, I guess my last thought um, before I wrap up is, is, you know, if you are just doing something for free, for fun for yourself, just have fun and do it. I mean, don't overthink it. Don't overdesign it. Um, just, just try to try to focus on some basic you know principles that I've covered. Um, and you know, if you're doing something for a business, you know, you might and you're not a designer yourself, you might want to consider this, you know getting a getting a designer to do something because that is more you know your brand and your you know, going back to marketing issues of making your content look like it should for your business. Um, but but again, the tools are out there and it's very possible for you to manage it all yourself. So, you know, if you have any questions, feel free to email me. I can give you my card. Uh, I'd be happy to, you know, to talk about you know, whatever problems or concerns we have. So, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys.